Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the conference. I'm Alicia Kasmerick. I teach elementary art in Central Iowa and I'm a content specialist with AOE. I'm going to share my best tips for running a successful fundraiser while demonstrating an awesome color mixing lesson you can use for your next fundraiser for a wide range of grade levels. If you'd like to create an abstract color wheel along with me today, I encourage you to grab a pencil, one colored pencil, liquid paint in red, blue, yellow, white, and black, a palette for mixing, a brush and water cup, and a paper towel to dry your brush. Go ahead and grab those now. The best part about creating art for a fundraiser is that it can easily fit into your curriculum and meet various standards. It doesn't have to be an extra. For this lesson, we'll be talking about color mixing, color families, line and shape, and painting techniques and skills. We'll focus on the color wheel, tints, and shades. You can vary this for any grade level that you have. You can keep it simple with just the primary colors, or you can take it all the way up and work out different color schemes using the intermediate colors, tints, and shades. But here's an example of one that we did with one hue and then two tints and two shades of that hue for all the primaries and secondary colors. Another example is here as well with the five different um, tints, shades, and hues for the primaries and secondaries, again, in a completely different way. Um, these work really well because students have their own personal touch on it for how they want to divide up their papers for all the different colors. And then here's another one that got a little more simplified with just having one hue, a tint, and a shade for each of those colors. When thinking about artwork to create for a fundraiser, picture it on things like mugs, bags, ornaments, cell phone covers, and my personal favorite, greeting cards. Things that families will want to buy or give as gifts. The added bonus is that these products are free advocacy for your art program. Hopefully you've grabbed your materials, so let's get started. This first step is kind of tricky. For today, we're gonna keep it relatively simple and stick with the three primary colors and their tints and shades. So first, we wanna start by splitting our paper into three areas and then outline each of those areas with the colored pencil. This will make sense in a second. So however you wanna divide your page is completely up to you. You can use geometric shapes, organic shapes, or even include recognizable shapes as well. So for today, I might just include maybe some circles. So I might have one going over here and then another going over here. So the point of this though is that even though I just drew two lines, I still have three different areas and we want each different area for each of our primary colors. So one area for maybe my reds, one for my yellows, one for my blues. Now we're ready for the next step. For this next step, make sure that you've gone over your main three areas with your colored pencil. Designating this line is going to be important because we'll be adding more lines in a second that split these areas even into, into smaller sections. So just going over my line as closely as possible, and it's okay if it's not perfect, we'll be painting over them anyway. Now that you have those done, it's time to take each of those areas and divide them into three smaller sections. You'll just use your regular pencil for this. So I tend to encourage students to either copy the shape of the lines or shapes that they've put on there in the first place, or divide it in a way that kind of makes sense and goes with the flow of how their paper has already started. So maybe over here, in this larger portion, I may add an extra circle here and then maybe another part here where I've got my one, two, three areas. Then up here, I might want to kind of copy this shape in this area. So now I have this split here and then maybe split here. So now in this specific area, I have one, two, three sections. Now below, I might want to include Copying this piece here to kind of create another half circle and then maybe even split this smaller because we don't want to have too big of areas on our pages so that we have enough paint to mix with. And so I have one, two, three areas here. Now we're ready to paint. So I suggest starting with yellow because this is the cleanest your brush is going to be for the whole project. So when we start with the yellow, I encourage my students to hold their brush like a pencil so, so that they have more control and then just get a little bit of paint on the end of their brushes, dipping it into that puddle. Whenever we paint, I really encourage my students to make sure that they're outlining the entire shape before filling it in. So I like to use the flat brushes for this project because they're able to get into some of those skinnier spaces where they have those shapes kind of meet and intertwine. So I'm gonna outline first, and so once I'm in that smaller space, I can start to fill that part in, and then maybe fill in along the top here. Get a little more paint on my brush. 
And then I encourage you to have some sort of mat down or if your students are really great at cleaning up after themselves during the cleanup process, um, you don't have to put a mat down either. So go ahead and painting fully to the edge of your papers and then painting in smooth brush strokes. So making sure your brush strokes go the same direction as you paint. Now you actually don't need to wash your brush as we start to mix the tint. You can just get your color again. So when I start to mix colors and what I explain to my students is to get just a little bit of a scoop. It's actually a pretty hefty scoop. Kind of wipe my brush, twisting it to get all that paint off. And then probably a second scoop will be good for our example today. But I really talk about making sure when you're mixing to mix enough paint for the area you want to cover. And then to get our tint, I'm not gonna dip my paintbrush right into the middle of the white because I actually need the white for all of my other tints later on. So I'm gonna scoop from the edge. So I'm gonna get my white scoop, wipe it into my pile, and then get the white from the edge again. And then as I mix, um, I encourage my students to kind of push towards the middle as they mix their paint because it saves room on the plate that they'll be mixing on. It also conserves the amount of paint that they have. So the less that they spread it around on that plate, the more that they have to work with. And then I kind of encourage them to keep mixing until we don't see any stripes of red, any, or not red, any stripes of yellow, any stripes of white. It's fully mixed together to make their tint. So now that I have my tint, I'm ready to go ahead and paint my outline. Again, I'm gonna have a lot of paint on my brush, so I might want to kind of wipe that aside. Fill in my outline using my flat brush to fill in those edges. Now, if there is a mistake and you overlap the colors, it's not a big deal because we add a finishing touch of outlining with a black line to kind of really emphasize those tints, hues, and shades so that the lines between the colors don't have to be exactly perfect. Now we're ready for the shade of yellow, so we need to clean off our brush, otherwise it'll turn into a tone. So when we clean our brushes, I always encourage my students to tap at the bottom, noticing that I'm not shaking the whole table, I'm not splashing water everywhere and then wipe to really get that extra water off. We don't ever tap our brush because it flings water and paint everywhere. And actually this gets a lot more water off by just wiping it on the side. And then because we are using liquid tempera, we don't need any water on our brush in order for the paint to work. So I usually have my paper towel handy, ready to dry off my brush, getting it as dry as possible, fixing the hairdo if necessary, and then I'm ready to mix my shade. So I'm actually gonna flip around my paper so that I'm able to access that part a little easier. So to make my shade, since it's so small, I'm probably not gonna even have to use two scoops of my yellow. I'm just going to get my scoop of yellow, kind of set it aside, get my scoop of black, start to mix it in, and starting to mix in towards the middle so I don't waste space on my plate, and I can serve the paint so I can actually paint with it. And I kind of twist my brush to get that excess color off so I don't get any surprises later. And then that's probably enough for my shade of my yellow. So I'm gonna fill in very carefully along the edges first, giving myself a nice outline, a border to fill in, and then fill along the top. So smoothing that out, smoothing in the same direction. And then after that's done, I actually can wash and dry my brush again and proceed with the rest of the colors. I mentioned this a little bit before, but I always suggest mixing your new tints and shades in their own little piles on the plates, especially if you're going to have students mix to create secondaries and inter even intermediate colors. It's important to keep those main colors um, relatively clear so that they can be reused over and over again. So now we're gonna start to add our red with our tint and shade and then blue with tint and shade as well. You're going to need a little bit of time for your paint to dry. So while we're waiting, I wanna give you my best advice for running a successful fundraiser. The first thing is to not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Like I mentioned earlier, use the supplies you have, create using the same routines that you use every day, adapt lessons to suit the art making guidelines that Art to Remember has, and create brightly colored, appealing work that fills the page and would look really great on different kinds of items. 
The second piece of advice that I have is to stay organized. Use methods you already have in place or start to incorporate cheaper options like box lids or binder clips. Art to Remember helps to facilitate the sorting process really nicely. All you have to do is create the art, keep the classes organized, place a sticker with each student's name on the artwork, ship them to Art to Remember, send home the personalized order forms, and then distribute the products. You also should advertise and promote and encourage your students to go home and talk about this great fundraiser that they're creating art for. Now we're ready to check our painting. And it seems dry enough to add our finishing touch of outlining each of the shapes with black. Um, I generally suggest that you paint your colors on one day and then do the outlining process on a second day. Mostly because you want your colors to dry that first day before you start to add more paint on top. And you want to have your students take a little more time adding this final touch that really sets those colors out and apart. So I encourage students as they're painting to carefully paint the lines that separate each of their colors, but also go back over the line that they've started to make sure that it is smooth. So I might, instead of starting right at the end here, come back up in the color and then start to bring that color down smoothly so that it's a nice smooth transition and looks like one solid line instead of going back and forth like we're actually doing. So coming up in that area, coming back down, and then smoothing all the way to the edge of the paper. Once that's done, you can go ahead and let that dry and then you are ready to set it off to Art to Remember. Hopefully you've enjoyed creating your abstract color wheel and gained a few tips on how to run a successful fundraiser in the future. Check out the handout with this presentation to review resources and how you can start a successful fundraiser for your program today.